My dearly beloved in Christ, today is a very important feast day, which, as you can see, because of its importance, predominates over the Sunday Mass, so that we have the Mass of the Purification with a commemoration of the fourth Sunday after Epiphany. And this feast is important because it brings to a conclusion the Christmas season. It is the final feast day in the church year of our Lord's infancy, commemorating the fact that when he was 40 days old, he was taken by his blessed mother and St. Joseph to the temple to be presented to Almighty God, to his father, according to the law. Now, you know how the chosen people were delivered out of Egypt, and God told Moses that the oldest son in every family was to be specially consecrated to God, and then, by the parents, would have to be ransomed, would have to be purchased by a certain sacrifice or certain sum to receive back their child. Now, there were a couple of reasons for this. First of all, to convey to the parents the truth that the children belong to God. And they are given to the parents in trust to form and train and mold that they might become saints of God. So the parents had to give an offering to obtain their child back. But more than that, it was because of the fact that the angel of death in Egypt had passed over the homes of the Israelites and had slain the firstborn in the families of the Egyptians. So this firstborn was consecrated to God as a reminder of God's great mercy for his people, his many favors, and how he protected their firstborn. We also see on this feast not only the presentation of the child Jesus at the age of 40 days to his father, but we also have a feast of our Blessed Mother. And it is called the Feast of the Purification because there was a rite, a blessing given to mothers that was called the Rite of Purification. Now, Our Lady was exempt from this rite because she gave birth in an entirely miraculous manner. Nevertheless, our Blessed Mother, because of her love of purity, her modesty and humility, wishing to be unnoticed, to pass for just another mother, Our Lady submitted to this rite of the law. And also because of her obedience and her love for the law, So our Blessed Mother, to give an example to other women, fulfilled perfectly the requirements of the law. Now, there was this holy man named Simeon, a priest. And this man was very just and devout, and it had been revealed to him that he would not die until he had seen the Messiah, the Redeemer. And when our Blessed Mother and St. Joseph brought the child Jesus into the temple, the Holy Ghost inspired Simeon or revealed to him that this was the Redeemer. And it says in the Gospel that he took the child into his arms and blessed God and thanked God that he had been allowed to to see the Redeemer. Imagine the bliss. Imagine the joy of Simeon taking the child Jesus into his arms, pressing him to his breast, and realizing that this is the Redeemer of the world. Father Cornelius Salapide, a great writer who compiled the commentaries of all the fathers of the church on a particular gospel passage, says this about the man Simeon. It seems that Simeon's wish was fulfilled and that he died shortly afterward. Therefore, upon arriving in limbo, he was the first to bring to Adam, Abraham, Moses, David, Isaiah, and all the fathers who sighed for Christ, 
the most joyful news of his birth and presentation, thus filling them with wondrous joy. So what a privilege was that of this holy man to not only live to see the Redeemer, to take him into his arms and bless God that he had been allowed to see him and then to be the first to announce him to the fathers in limbo. Now, the hymn, or we call it a canticle, that Simeon said, Now thou dost dismiss thy servant, O Lord, according to thy word in peace, etc. It's very short, four verses. This hymn, or canticle, is recited every day by priests and religious in the divine office in the hour of Compline. It is recited in the hour of Compline for two reasons. The first is to admonish the faithful, especially the church's priests, to think upon death, and so to live as though they were to die in the evening. A further reason is to admonish them to acquire the yearning which Simeon felt to pass away from the vanity and the troubles of this life to the true and blessed life in heaven. So that in reciting this hymn daily, we may beg God to allow us to depart and to say with St. Paul, I desire to be dissolved and to be with Christ. St. Ambrose said, Behold how the just man, as though shut in within the gross prison house of the body, wishes to be loosed, that he may begin to be with Christ. But he that will be free, let him come to the temple. Let him come to Jerusalem. Let him wait for the Lord. Let him embrace him with good work, as though with the arms of faith. Then shall he be set free, that he may not see death, because he shall have seen life. So there are three canticles in the New Testament, all of them recorded by St. Luke. The first was the Benedictus in chapter 1 of St. Luke's Gospel, in which the holy man Zachary, when John the Baptist was born, said this canticle, the Benedict, Benedictus, Blessed be God. And it's rather long. It is recited in the hour of lauds of the divine office. Then we have also in chapter 1, the canticle of our Blessed Mother, when she visited her cousin Elizabeth and said those beautiful words, My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior, etc. The Magnificat. And that is recited in the hour of Vespers. And finally, the Nunc Dimittis, the Latin name taken from the first two words in Latin of Simeon. Now thou dost dismiss thy servant, O Lord, according to thy word in peace, because my eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, a light of revelation to the Gentiles, and the glory of thy people Israel. As I mentioned, it is recited in Compline. And Father Cornelius Alapide goes on to make an interesting comment. He says, Thus St. Mary of Egypt, before her death, receiving the Eucharist from St. Zosimus, wept and rejoiced with great devotion and sang, Now thou dost dismiss thy handmaid, O Lord, according to thy word in peace, and immediately gave up her soul to her Creator. St. Mary Magdalene and many others did the same. That is why, as often as we receive Holy Communion, we should say, now thou dost dismiss thy servant, O Lord, in peace, because my eyes have seen, indeed my mouth has tasted, and my stomach has received thy salvation. So this canticle of Simeon is used daily by Holy Mother Church, and it reminds us to always be prepared for death, to be ready for when God will call us. Now Simeon recognized our Lord as the Messiah because he was moved to do so by the Holy Ghost. We might say he lived in tune or attuned to the inspirations of the Holy Ghost. There was another person in the temple who likewise knew that our Lord was the Redeemer and her name was Anna, a prophetess. Now it's very interesting what St. Luke tells us about Anna in the temple and that is 
that she, from the time she was married, lived with her husband for seven years, and then he died, and she spent the rest of her life in the temple. And at the time that our Lord was brought in at the presentation, she was 84 years old. So she had been living in the temple probably since her mid-twenties. She was married, at the, according to the custom. Maidens were married when they were 15, 16, 17 years old. She was married for, 17, for seven years, and then she lived as a widow in the temple, and it says, fasting and praying night and day. She lived entirely for our Lord in the temple. And when our Blessed Mother and St. Joseph brought in the child Jesus, she knew this was the Redeemer. And it says she told all of those she could find. She announced to everyone the good tidings that the redemption was at hand. She indeed is a wonderful example to us, as well as Simeon, of living in the temple, living in the spirit of prayer, living in the presence of God, living for eternity. So as you can see, there are many different mysteries that we celebrate today on this feast of the purification of Our Lady and the presentation of our Lord in the temple. The candles also that we bless for the year are a very important reminder of Christ, the light of the world. The wax of the candle is made by the bees the virgin bees, the worker bees. And so it is a symbol of our Lord's sacred body. The wick in the midst of the candle is a symbol of his human soul. And the flame when we light the candle is a reminder of our Lord's divinity. So we use the candles in the liturgy. We encourage you to use blessed candles in your home. A reminder of our Lord, the Redeemer, who was born in Bethlehem and on this day was presented for the first time to his heavenly father in his father's house and how the child Jesus loved his father's house. We recall how later in his public life he drove out the money changers who were desecrating his father's house. He said, my father's house is a house of prayer and you have made it a den of thieves. So let us reverence the house of God and live in the spirit of prayer as did these two holy persons, Simeon and Anna. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.